welcome to today's worship service with God's House, our video formatted worship services during COVID. This service includes a celebration of the Lord's Supper, so if you've not already done so, if you would gather up the juice and bread or wafers that you will be using during the service and you will have them when we consecrate, uh, I encourage you to pause at this moment and then come back and complete the service. Now let's have our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning will be coming from uh, Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty ferment. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to the surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with loop and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise him is coming from, is our God is awesome. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. And now let us join in prayer. Holy God, living Jesus, loving spirit. We ask that you sanctify our worship and praises to you. Come to us with joy, celebration, and thanksgivings. Speak to us words of healing and life. Empower us for the work you have given us to do. Amen. And as we gather, we now pray the prayers of the people. This will again be a bidding prayer. Let us pray. God of all life, for this day of hope, we give you thanks. For your power to overcome evil and death, we praise you. For the grace and mercy of your love, we are grateful. For we know our weaknesses, our sins, and our failures in faithfulness to love you and others. Lord, have mercy on us. On this day of resurrection and new life, we lift up those who grieve and suffer injustices. and hate, we pray for peace and reconciliation. We know that these come through love, compassion, and humility. Give us hearts of generosity toward one another, to believe that change is possible, and to anoint us with your spirit to be that change today, here, and now. to being filled with your love that has made this way possible for all people. We 
to show your love in our relationships with one another. And so we pray for one another in sickness, grief, suffering, hardships, and all of the uncertainties of this life in our silent prayers now. Lord, hear our prayers and have mercy on us. Amen. Our Christian history text is from Acts chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Our epistle reading comes from Revelation 1, 3 through 8. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear, and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priest serving his God and Father, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Right now at God's house, we ask you to be a blessing. In giving, you can give what you have earned. You can give your love. You can give your time. You can give your compassion. You can give your understanding. The whole point is is that you give to something and someone (coughs) that others can benefit from, that you become a vessel of God and you give with love and joy. Our hymn is, We Are the Church Alive. We are the church of God, Christ's presence on this earth. We give God's spirit, body, and the act of our new birth. As yielded open channels for God's descending dove, we shout and sing with joy we bring. God's all-inclusive love. We are the church of life, the body must be healed. Where strife has bruised and battered us, God's wholeness is revealed. 
Our mission is an urgent one, in strength and health let's stand, so that our witness to God's light will shine across the land. Our gospel reading today is John 20, 19 through 31. <clears throat> When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you to our readers and participants in worship. Now is the time to hear our texts tell us. Last week on Easter Sunday, as our worship participants were gathering to make our Sunday video, two of us had a conversation about this very text in John, about Thomas. See, Thomas sometimes gets a bad rap for insisting on seeing. <laughs> but there's more to this story for our ears to hear. See, I've been preaching these texts for almost 30 years now from the Revised Common Lectionary. Once every three years, I come to this one. And something new jumped out at me. Scripture is like that. Hmm. Two things. According to John's Gospel, and realize that each Gospel is written with a different set of intentions and purposes, and it tells the stories in a way that reach those goals, John reaches this moment when the Holy Spirit is breathed on the apostles. Mm -hmm. We get focused on Thomas's doubt and forget that the other ten had had the Spirit breathed upon them mm -hmm. and he was not there to receive it. Mm -hmm. There's a story back in Exodus where things had gotten rough in the life of Moses and the burden of being the governor or the ruler and judge over the people in their differences and their squabbles had become too much. And God tells Moses, take 70 of the elders 
and bring them to me. I am going to expand your leadership and lighten your load. There will be others who will be given some of your spirit. So God took some of Moses' spirit and put it on these other leaders. Only there were only 68 of them there. Two of them were still back out in the camp. And they started to prophesy too. The people who heard this said, tell them not to. They were indignant at the two that were outside. But Moses says, are you jealous for my sake? I would that the Lord would have prophets or make prophets of all of you, that God's spirit would be on all of you. Perhaps this gospel often missed point is that Thomas may feel excluded from the gift of the spirit which had been given to the other disciples. And that the purpose of Jesus' reply to him is to open the door for all of us to be given the Spirit and to become prophets, to become disciples and apostles in Jesus' name, not on our basis of our having literally seen and touched him, but on the basis of faith and the presence of the Spirit in us, which makes us equal. Peter calls this the priesthood of all believers. You see, the priests and Sadducees had seen Jesus and been jealous of his power and refused to believe, even when the, the guards from the tomb came and told them what had happened about the resurrection. They paid the guards off. Hmm. Unlike Moses, they wanted to control and power for themselves. Mm -hmm. But I get a hunch that, that Thomas knew that Jesus had called him to become an apostle of the good news along with the other twelve or the other ten, and not having been with them when Jesus showed up the first time, and not having received the Spirit for this ministry, perhaps he was not as doubtful as he was insistent on being equal. This per perspective and interpretation changes the message from blame or stigma for his doubt to one that's more encouraging for us today. We are to expect equality among believers and our Christian peers in faith, we are to examine our hearts for the presence of the Spirit who empowers each of us for our ministries and calling together in service to Jesus. To see and touch Jesus is about our personal experiences with God's work in our life, about how the Spirit has come into our lives. We see and touch with faith, not with our eyes or our hands. I think this is the experience that, John, that Thomas was feeling that he was missing in John's gospel. This interpretation also makes more sense of what Jesus says when he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. This is a blessing on us today. And for all Christians throughout the centuries who have heard the news that these apostles proclaimed and believed, we are equals. It's not our works of experience of seeing and touching, but our faith in believing and trusting in this good news that matters. It's God's work of the Spirit in us that has come upon us to confirm our callings, to forgive, and to tell us the message of salvation for others. It is God's work in and through us in the power of the Spirit that empowers us to speak these truths of our faith to principalities and powers like the apostles in the story in Acts before the Sanhedrin, those who would deny it. We know a different truth, the one that they are denying. And this is where the religious leaders and the priests and the leaders of Israel failed. They were jealous of the spirit of God in others. They heard the gospel of Jesus and did not believe. And therefore, they tried to silence the apostles. But the story goes, they had no power. This happened, this little, little passage that we read today, they had actually locked them up in jail. And an angel from God had come and opened the jail. They got out. They went right back to the temple and began preaching again. And that's where uh, the priests sent and had them arrested again, but without force because they were afraid of the people. You hear the fear? They knew what they were doing. They had no power to enforce their silence, no power to stop their preaching, no power to even keep them in prison. Because of the resurrection, 
They had no power or authority over the disciples and no power to create fear in them. The Holy Spirit of life had come upon them and there was no stopping the spread of this good news. It was already turning Jerusalem upside down. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I saw in this. As I ponder, I realize that gossip is a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. This sensational news traveled fast. <laughs> and bad news travels even faster sometimes. Mm -hmm. It generates a lot of conversation. The question is, is who heard the good news and believed it? Gossip can also include false information or misleading impartial facts, like the story of the guards at the tomb having been paid off by the priests to tell lies. We've been subjected to a lot of this kind of world news today. So coming back to Thomas, I don't hear in this story of Thomas Down a condemnation of him wanting to verify the truth for himself. Here's a guy who's just experienced the trauma of seeing the man he believed to be the Messiah betrayed by a friend to his enemies, unjustly condemned, and brutally murdered. We are not told why they were there behind the locked door, why he was not there behind the locked doors with the other ten the first time that Jesus came. Mm -hmm. We are left to guess. Was he off on some errand? Had he chosen to hide somewhere else? Did he fear another betrayal? of the remaining disciples. That really doesn't matter. He just wasn't there. But have we ever experienced in our own lives not being with our own faith community when some significant event happened? Mm -hmm. Did we struggle with getting on board with them? Did we feel left out of the decision or lack their vision? Were we less committed or passionate about their new direction when we were not a part of what was being decided? this happens by chance, it's one thing. Again, pausing on this in a moment with a timely word. When we attend our gatherings and conversations together, even as we hide during COVID, it's important we be present. I might stop following this thought, except that at God's house, we are in a time of great change as we look for our forward to our future. It matters that we seek God's guidance together. It matters that the Spirit be upon each one of us in this process and we speak the truth as we understand it. It matters that we be united by faith and courage in Jesus Christ to believe that proclaiming the good news of God's love for all people cannot be stopped. It matters that we walk forward without fear and that we listen to God and not what others might tell us. It mattered that Thomas be on board with the other disciples so that their witness could be united in faith and the Spirit. It matters for us today. Change is coming, and we need to be together in it, united by the Spirit, trusting God and encouraging one another. If one of us misses a meeting, it matters to the rest of us that everyone be informed, heard, and fully included in this what God is doing here today. Our texts have moved chronologically from the small band of apostles in Jerusalem to John's letter to his churches in Revelation to the various scattered churches in the world today. It matters that we all get the memo of God's grace. John speaks as if there are different spirits in each of the different churches, but there is only one spirit sent by Jesus upon all believers. And each congregation is led by that spirit into the ministries God intends for it to fulfill in its time and place. We are never led to be at odds with one another by the spirit of Christ. So lest we feel self-righteous and, and indignant, we must examine our own hearts and the kinds of jealousies and comparisons that we may hear in our contexts. We do have different opinions and perspectives, listening with an open mind and love. Because faith for love and God and Jesus Christ will recognize the spirit when it speaks, peace be with you. We will hear it. We will hear it in times of persecution to allay our fears as we care about one another. We will hear it when we are told the truth that we have come to know in our own faith experiences. We will hear it in the ways when the ways of this world manage to somehow get back into our faith communities. 
We still struggle with that. We hear peace be with you as we gather for worship and as we part to go each of our ways to serve God. We hear it as comforting and strengthening, encouraging us in times of change and challenge. Whatever this world and its civil and even religious powers may dish out to silence us, it will not prevail if we are walking in the Spirit. And this is what is necessary, that having heard the good news and believed it, we become the next generation of witnesses empowered to speak these things that have happened in Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit, the breath of life of God in us, which is given to all who obey what they have heard, that guides and empowers us to be such witnesses. And we respect that each person has come to faith through their own experience, in their own way of hearing and believing. There are no distinctions. The church's one authority is God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the witness of the Spirit whom we obey. Jesus says, blessed are those who did not see but heard and believed, whose faith has become a new life in our risen Lord Jesus. These scriptures were written for our, by our predecessors for our encouragement so that we might believe and trust the good news of forgiveness and the new life that we have in his name. These stories are for our unity as we are now witnesses in Jesus' name. The Spirit has been poured out upon all who believe as God addresses the burden of our calling to be God's holy people in this world. We share that burden, and all of us are needed for this work, each one according to the gift of the Spirit. There is no earthly power that can prevent this work from being done as long as we are obeying God. Jesus blesses us. Peace be with you and by the Spirit, seals us as God's own and makes us equal in this work. Claim your place and believe the word. Our sermon hymn is Together We Serve. Deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This table proclaims the accomplishment of God's promised salvation. As you have confessed your sins and turned to the grace of God in Jesus Christ, they are forgiven. God is with you. And I also with you. Let us pray. Yes, O oh God, you created all that is with your word, and your love calls all creation to bring forth life and glorify you. We look to the word that has become flesh for our redemption and reconciliation through your grace. Your love is for all who turn to you in faith and hope. On this day of resurrection, we give thanks for your love that comes to give us new life in Jesus Christ. We listen for your spirit to speak, to guide, to help, and to strengthen us in faith until all of your purposes are fulfilled and established forever in glory. We join the hosts of heaven and all creation in praising and glorifying you as the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life, saying together, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks for it, he broke it and he said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, in the same way he also took the cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Let us pray. God of hosts, creator of the universe, you have given us the grain of the field and the fruit of the vine to sustain our bodies. Jesus took these elements and set them apart for this sacred and holy sacrament to sustain our spirits in community. Bless them as holy and set them apart for this sacred use as each of us understands your grace and your love for us. Amen. Amen. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Take any this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the love of Christ poured out for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Let us pray. God of power and grace, we give you thanks for life and for your power to heal and sustain our lives today. We give you thanks for the love you show us in Jesus Christ and thanks for your spirit and your presence with us always and the reconciling work that this does to unite us in Christ. We give you thanks for this table and the community that it nurtures as it is enriched by our diversities and our sharing together. We give you thanks for this witness to the resurrection and its power to turn us toward you and trust that no matter what may happen in life, we are forever safe in your care. Amen. Amen. He is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Live as children of light and walk together in unity as God's beloved children. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. 
And the Spirit of God that has been poured out upon you will strengthen and sustain you, guide and keep you until Christ comes again in glory. God is with you. And also with you. you.